So here is editable text. We've got regular editable text. And I want you to think about this, again, in that sort of appearance property mindset. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change my fill to like a light cyan. I'm gonna change my stroke to be absolutely nothing. And then in here, I'm gonna add another fill, right? Which it looks like I already have one. So again, I'll, I'll do that just in case people aren't familiar with it. We're on here, click new fill, it's adding a new fill to it. For now, we're just gonna do a gray. But this is that effect I was talking about. If I click on this, I'm on that appearance property, and I go to effect, and I come down to distort and transform, and I choose transform, first turn on preview, this helps. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna tell it to move that gray fill by one point. That's it, one point. And you can barely see it in there, it's just barely offsetting. But then down here at the bottom, I'm gonna tell it to make 400 copies of it. And it does that, right? So now we've done that super hipster trendy advertising billboard text that you see on every bus in every city everywhere in America. But remember, it's still editable text, right? And that's what we, I, I see so many designers losing hours building a very graphical type appearance out of objects, and then they're like, oh, they changed the word. Like, we don't want power anymore, we want strength. And they're like, okay. And all afternoon, they're re-rendering the style and strength. Don't do that, do it with appearance properties. Because now that I have that, right, I could go in here, go back to that gray fill and say, you know what, I didn't want that particular fill. In fact, I wanted a gradient. So let me have that. And as long as I'm on that fill, I can grab the gradient tool and I can drag that any which way that I want. And it's all still editable. Is this making sense? Cool, so now if we look at the next example here, actually let's close that one. Don't save. So I just wanna show you an example of, of how you can maybe play with this and take it a little bit further. And I'm just gonna use a generic font for this. But whether it's a graphic, and I'll pick up my eyedropper and sample these. Oh, we're not gonna do this to America. Oh yeah, we are, all right? Now it's a bad one. But that's a very graphical type of, of text. If I take something like this, and I've got those saved as graphic styles, and sometimes with my team, I literally just send them an AI file that has all of these squares on it, and I'll name them like headers, uh, sidebar, um, you know, map graphics, call out, things like that. And then they can just go in and sample them or save them as graphic styles on their machine. You can save graphic styles and import them as well. But doing it as type, I can go and even sample from objects for type and pick that up. And then as I go into like our character, uh-oh, the emoji font trapped me. Ah. All, and look at the appearance properties that are in here, guys. I've got a ton of stuff going on. I've got a gradient fill, a solid fill, a pattern fill, a transform stroke that's inset. I've got a gradient stroke that's giving me the highlight. That seems like a lot of work, but once it's done, it's done once. And I have it, 